I'd like to welcome today to the podcast for the first time ever, my guest, his name is Marcus LeCary, and he is a mental performance coach. Marcus, thank you very much for joining the podcast today. First of all, how are you? Thanks for having me. I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you. So uh, let me just jump right into it. So how did you find yourself in the field of being a mental performance coach and what goes into that job? Yeah, so I grew up playing hockey, uh, originally from Thunder Bay, um, and I was a goaltender, um, you know, one of those positions in sport that uh, highly, highly uh, reliant on mental skills. And for me, uh, you know, my mental skills definitely uh, lacked in my, my physical skills. Uh, and uh, it was something that as I learned more about it, kind of growing up and uh, got more, uh, more information. It was something that I wanted to, to kind of pursue and, and be able to provide to, to others. I started coaching uh, hockey at, at a young, young age while I was still in junior. And I, I could see how uh, bringing this to, to those players and goaltenders uh, was beneficial. So that's kind of how I, I started with it. Uh, and then going to Lakehead University, I took psychology and kinesiology and that kind of uh, guided me into doing my master's at the University of Ottawa, where they have a, a program there that's uh, very much uh, direct and not as as much um, based on kind of your research. It's getting out in the field, meeting the clients, and, and that face to face sort of contact. And I really, really enjoyed that. So it was something that I wanted to continue with. Nice, that's fantastic. And before I go on to my uh, next question in my set here when you were starting out and when you were playing hockey, did you have anybody in your position now that was helping you? Not at all. Um, you know, being from Thunder Bay, um, a more remote community, uh, fairly decent size, but it was, uh, I think compared to maybe the GTA we're a little bit behind in, in those kind of trends. And it was something that was really starting to uh, just kind of, take off at that time. So it wasn't something that was really available to me here. Uh, and, you know, this was a time before uh, this kind of contact that we can have now through <laughs> through Zoom and, and that kind of stuff where uh, it's more readily available. So what would make an athlete seek out a mental performance consultant? At the end of the day, it's really about your performance. Um, so what we see a lot of is almost that too late approach, right? It's almost like going to a doctor, you go once you're hurt or sick uh, uh, and you're not going in advance. And that, that's where, you know, a lot of athletes, you go see a trainer and they're training you in injury prevention. Mm -hmm. uh, the best time to, to seek out a mental performance consultant is prior to having any sort of, um, you know, breakdown, I guess mm -hmm. we'll say. Um, so, where we often see it is something comes up and, and people come looking for that quick fix. Um, and after the fact, but really it's, it's the opportunity to work on, on all those skills so that when something comes along that, that causes you a little bit of trouble, you know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's definitely recommended uh, to, to start, you know, as, as soon as possible, if you're, as, whether you're a serious athlete or not, it helps with so many aspects of your life. How do you get an athlete to open up and be vulnerable, especially if they're going through a tough time? Uh, it's really about the connection. Um, you know, it's with any sort of uh, interaction with people, the, the more you can connect with them, the more likely they are to, to open up and really trust. Right. Uh, and that's where when an athlete is, is seeking us out uh, in, on their own, mm -hmm. uh, you kind of get that connection and, and uh, that vulnerability a little bit easier because they're coming to you looking for something. Um, when you kind of get forced into it, whether you're you know part of a, a team and they're saying every athlete has to go meet with, with a mental performance consultant, sometimes that's where they're a little more closed off um, mm -hmm. because it's, it's not something they're quite as open to. But I think uh, the way the field is progressing and how so many uh, young athletes are being introduced to it now they become far more accepting of it uh, a lot earlier and it, it makes that initial connection easier. Are there any differences between a female athlete to a male athlete? Are the differences 
or are the issues, I should say, different between men and women in your experience? I think it's pretty similar. Um, I think sometimes with the, the female athletes, uh, for me personally as a male, it, it might take a little more to get them to, to open up and be vulnerable. Um, but it's all kind of based on that, that initial connection, right? And sometimes you're not always going to connect with people and, and you know, sometimes there's a better fit uh, for a mental performance consultant for you as, as an individual. Um, but really, I, I think it's, it's pretty well the same, um, especially uh, at the younger ages, it, it, th there's a lot of similarities that are so uh, kind of intermingled in their sport. Uh, there it hasn't been that that big separation yet. Actually, that was that's a perfect answer because it's going to lead me into my next question, which is talking about issues that younger athletes might face compared to older athletes. Yeah, so with younger athletes, uh, what I kind of tend to find is they're more concerned, their performance and their thoughts are more concerned with their appearance and their peers. Mm -hmm. uh, how is this going to be perceived by others if I fail? If I don't win, how am I going to be perceived by teammates, competitors, uh, et cetera? When you get into older athletes and they've kind of reached those points where they have well-established goals and they're out there uh, in search of something, whether it's uh, awards, scholarships, making the next team, whatever that may be, pro, uh, it becomes more, more internalized and individualized in there. Um, their approach that way. So they're, they're more concerned with uh, not getting that reward, whether it's a, an internal reward uh, or, or external. And that kind of leads me, uh, that's a nice segue into my next question to tie a bow on this kind of topic is what about the level of professional sports? So if I, would you, if I was an NHL player and I was one of your clients and you also had a client that was in uh, a 16 year old in AAA, would you tell us the same kind of things or does it differ based on the level of uh, sport that they're in at the time? Yeah, it's, it's very similar. I think um, with an older athlete or a professional athlete, uh, it's important to remember they've gotten to uh, a certain level and they're, you know, as an adult, very much in tune with themselves and what works and doesn't work. Uh, so sometimes things almost can progress a little bit faster that way um, because they are more self-aware uh, um, and, and understanding of, of how they've gotten to that level. Um, so I, I think that would be the big difference. I guess the other side of it is uh, what the outcomes and rewards uh, are for them, right? With, the, with a professional athlete, they're trying to uh, feed their family. Uh, they have different priorities kind of outside of their sport uh, that you wouldn't see in a younger athlete. What does a normal nine to five look like for you? Or is, is every day kind of like something on my end where every single day is different and you sometimes never know what to expect. Yeah. Uh, so for me, uh, I'm not doing this full time right now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was coaching um, pandemic hit and that kind of uh, changed things up for me. Um, but uh, yeah, that one's a tough one for me to. No, that's okay. It's uh, honestly, it's a tough one for a lot of us right now, but uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to ask you something based on that answer. And uh, you said you were doing some coaching. Unfortunately, the pandemic put a halt to that. But have you found that uh, with your coaching, you've been able to tap in on the mental performance side with the kids that you're coaching? Or do, do, those, uh, do you marry those two things, essentially? Yeah, I think it changes the way uh, I approach my communicating with the, the players. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that uh, I'm much more mindful of uh, as I'm speaking is making sure that I'm phrasing things in a certain way that uh, now, you know, with the research and with my education and I'm more understanding of, okay, this is a way to basically get the same message across, uh, but in a way that's going to make the athlete for, feel more empowered and, and uh, not so much, uh, you know, criticized or, or as if there's pressure on them. Um, so it, it allows me to word things uh, in a way that it's going to make the athlete, I think, in the end, hopefully perform better and also be more aware of uh, themselves. And uh, sorry, I don't know what that noise is. No, you're all good. We got a little uh, background soundtrack going on. 
That was weird. My phone is not even in my hand. That's okay. No, hey, uh, that's the beauty of not doing it live. So you're don't worry, yeah. you're all good. <laughs> um, yeah. Hopefully that was. Yeah. No, I thought that was good. Uh, here, let me. I'll just jump into the next question. We'll just keep it moving that way for you. Um, so you had mentioned in that previous answer that uh, it's about empowering the athletes. So what are some ways that you would empower them or promote positivity uh, with one of the athletes that you have? I think one of the most important things is, is acceptance. Uh, so oftentimes um, we're always told, you know, think positive, be positive. Uh, and when we aren't thinking that way, uh, it almost kind of builds upon it where we're getting upset with ourselves or frustrated that we're not thinking positive. Uh, and at the end of the day, it, it, you know, it's natural to have negative thoughts. It's natural to have those kind of defeating uh, moments. And it's the important thing is to just accept it, try to replace it with something that is more positive, uh, and then move on. Nice. And that's perfect. And actually, that's going to kind of drive me into my next question, which is, obviously, you want to be put into a good mindset. And it usually helps to do that right off the right off the hop when you wake up. So for just an average guy like me, what are some things that I can do either physically or mentally, maybe at the start of the day to put myself in a good and positive mindset. Yeah. So, um, I mean, one of the easiest things, maybe not the easiest, but the easiest answer, uh, is to start out with something sort of active, right? Get your body moving. Um, it, it gets all the, you know, the, the juices flowing kind of thing and blood pumping. And, and that's an easiest way to, um, to start out positive. However, one of the most difficult ways for, for a lot of people, right? Sure. Um, depending on your, your routines, um, you know, that's why I say it's, it's an easy answer, but it's not always the easiest thing. Um, but that kind of connection of, of mind and, and body uh, can really help to kind of push things along. The other thing, uh, you know, oftentimes we'll wake up and we'll go, oh my goodness, I have to do this and this and this and this today. Uh, and it's kind of that, that morning dread of everything that has to, uh, to go on throughout the day. And it's kind of seeing those, uh, those things as opportunities um, and really just kind of training your brain. It's not something that's going to happen uh, day one, but okay, waking up and, and looking at, okay, what's my to-do list today? Uh, why is this a positive thing for me? You know, I wake up and, oh, I got to go to work today. I got, I got to do this. Okay, I get the opportunity to go to work. I get the opportunity to provide for myself, my family, uh, whatever that may be. So really turning those sort of obstacles, we'll call them into, into opportunities. Uh, and again, it's not something that, that just happens quickly, right? It's training your brain every day to, okay, I do this. And eventually you wake up and those thoughts are just going to sort of naturally uh, appear rather than, you know, you having to kind of force it. I think that's a wonderful answer. And uh, I'm going to take part of that and go into my next question, which is you spoke about obstacles and obviously COVID has been a pretty big obstacle. I mean, we can't be doing this interview in person. We're going to do it over Zoom. And I'm sure that's changed a lot of what your job is the same way it's changed a lot of what my job is. So now let's just talk COVID and athletes. Is, is there uh, more concern with everything going on that maybe they're not, uh, you know, if you're a hockey player, maybe you haven't been able to get out on the ice recently or uh, just different sports being affected by this. So uh, what have you seen COVID wise with some of the clients that you've spoken to? Yeah, it's, uh, sorry, I, I don't know if I'm going to lose you here. I'm just getting some internet issues. No, no worries. You're all good. Um, I, can, I can still sorry. hear you pretty well. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's one of those things, everybody's going to react to it differently. Um, everybody's going to have kind of different takes on it, different ways of dealing with it. Um, I think it's opened up a lot of really great opportunities. Um, you know, making different connections that, that you may not have the opportunity to make, uh, learning different things, learning different ways. Uh, there, there's a lot of you know, in a really difficult time, a lot of ways to see things positively um, and take some of those away. But, you know, at the end of the day, everybody wants to be out there doing what they, 
they love to do. Uh, and I think that that is, it's definitely been tough uh, on a lot of people. Um, I guess taking those, those opportunities where you do get the chance to, to be out there, uh, if, if it's hockey, you get the chance to be on the ice, making the most of that opportunity, having the most amount of fun with it that you can, uh, and, and trying to improve in, in those limited um, limited practices or, or ice times or whatever it may be. Um, but I, I think that, like like you said, the obstacle opportunity side of it, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can view it and, and see this as a way to improve, um, you know, mental skills is a perfect example uh, most of us spend most of our time practicing uh, preparing physically and spend very little time on the mental side of our, our game uh, or our life even uh, so this is an opportunity to really you know you're at home you can't be out and about take the time to to read up on it learn about it um, you know reach out to different people um, and try to, to make the most out of this that's fantastic and uh, let me wrap this up. I have one final question for you, and uh, it's going to be a little bit of a two-parter. So what is, in your opinion, the hardest part about your job? And on the opposite side, what's the most rewarding? Uh, the hardest part, I think, is seeing uh, athletes that, that really, they just want to perform and be successful so badly and, and uh, aren't always seeing the results that they, they're hoping for. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I feel like I've been in their shoes a lot of the time and, and uh, you know, know that feeling and um, almost that sort of helplessness that, you know, I, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong or uh, I don't know how to fix it. Um, so that that's difficult, but hopefully, you know, the, the goal is to be able to help them through that and, and understand it and improve. Uh, the most rewarding is, is definitely seeing uh, those improvements and, and seeing their successes. Uh, and the changes that, that they go through. Um, I, I think, you know, the, the best text email call you can get is, hey, I made this team or, hey, uh, you know, we won whatever. or Hey, I, you know, I didn't uh, get emotional when this happened today. Uh, all those kind of little things that, uh, you know, show you that you know, what you're doing is, is helping and that they're appreciative of it. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, Marcus, unfortunately, we're out of time. I'd love to keep you much, much longer because, this has been fantastic, but I wanted to say thank you so much for uh, being a guest today. Thank you. No, anytime. This is the end of this episode of the Blue Post podcast. Please stay tuned for the next one in our wellness and mobility series. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll be back next.